Well, that's it for another uh, Sound of the Sixties. Thank you so much for listening. Richie will be uh, with us, uh, Richie Anderson, after the uh, 8 o'clock news. And I'll be back with you uh, tomorrow, of course, at 7 o'clock for the Golden Hour. And I'll see you in uh, Richmond on Monday and Woking on Tuesday with our live Sound of the 60s shows. So once again, thank you so much for listening. Have a lovely day. Don't forget to put those clocks forward by one hour, will you? This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app on your smart speaker and on 88 to 91 FM. Bye-bye. We're the BBC News at 8 o'clock on Saturday the 25th of March. This is Jason Kay. Good morning. Two teenagers have been charged with the murder of another boy. The Hollywood actress Gwyneth Paltrow denies in court that she caused a skiing accident seven years ago. And Queen Elizabeth's dresser is among those being honoured by the king. Two boys aged 14 and 16 will appear in court this morning, charged with murdering another teenager in Northampton. Rowan Shand, who was 16, was stabbed near a pub in Kingsthorpe on, on Wednesday. Two other men arrested over the attack have been released with no further action. Helen Freeman's son went to the school with the victim. To see your child so upset, and as a group, as mums and our children, are all friends with him, so... We've just been messaging each other, making sure we're there for one another. And that's all we can do. The Oscar-winning actress Gwyneth Paltrow has told the court she didn't cause a skiing accident in the US state of Utah seven years ago, insisting that responsibility lay with the man suing her. A retired doctor, Terry Sanderson, wants nearly a quarter of a million pounds in damages, claiming she's to blame for the long-lasting brain injury he suffered. Miss Paltrow appeared on the witness stand for the first time last night. The entertainment journalist KJ Matthews was listening to her evidence. She said that initially, when he collided into her, according to her, she thought she was being assaulted because she saw skis go through her legs and then she felt like a body press up against her and then she didn't really know, you know, what was happening. She was really confused as to how that could have happened. A human rights watchdog has criticised heavy-handed police tactics in France as officials try to restore order after days of protests against changes to the country's pension system. A three-day state visit by the King, which was due to begin tomorrow, has been postponed because of the unrest. Queen Elizabeth's dresser and pool bearers have been recognised by the King in a special honours list. Many others who played roles in her funeral will also be honoured, as Charlotte Gallagher reports. Angela Kelly was by Queen Elizabeth's side for more than two decades. She was her dresser and one of her personal advisers. In a sign of their close relationship, she was unusually allowed to write books about her work while still a royal employee. She's been made a member of the Royal Victorian Order, along with Paul Wybrew. He was page to the Queen and part of her funeral procession. Members of the military who carried the Queen's coffin at the state funeral and the RAF flight crew who brought her back to London from Scotland are also among those recognised. The Women's Rugby Union Six Nations Championship is beginning this afternoon. Wales are playing Ireland, while England begin their campaign for a fifth straight title at home to Scotland. England's captain Sarah Hunter will have an extra incentive as it's her last ever game. Our sports correspondent Joe Curry reports. Sarah Hunter is calling time on her illustrious career after today's match. The 37-year-old retires as England's most capped player, female or male. The Red Roses' opponent, Scotland, finished bottom last year after failing to win a game, something they say they're determined not to repeat. Wales hosts Ireland, looking to build on last year's World Cup quarter-final. Ireland, meanwhile, will hope this tournament marks a new period for their women's setup, following a public spat between players and the Irish RFU. The side have now been offered full-time contracts. The Scotland and Wales men's football teams get their Euro 2024 qualifying campaigns underway today. Scotland will take on Cyprus at Glasgow's Hampden Park this afternoon, while Wales face the World Cup semi-finalist Croatia in split. One of the pioneers of the technology revolution, Gordon Moore, has died at the age of 94. He co-founded the Intel Corporation and began working on semiconductors in the 1950s, becoming famous for Moore's Law, which predicted a steep rise in computer processing power. He also set up an organisation with his wife focusing on environmental causes, known as the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. Its president, Harvey Feinberg, paid tribute to him. 
Gordon Moore was a towering figure in Silicon Valley, in business, and in philanthropy. He was a man who brought wisdom and great humility to every task he undertook. The publisher Penguin has installed a book vending machine at a railway station in Devon. It said the company's founder, Sir Alan Lane, complained in the 1930s there was nothing good to read at Exeter St David's Station and hoped the automat would ensure modern-day commuters didn't face the same problem. And the weather, it'll be unsettled for much of the UK today. With some sunny spells and scattered, sometimes heavy showers, it'll be drier in northern Scotland. Winds will ease during the day. Temperatures should reach 8 Celsius in Edinburgh, 12 in Belfast, 13 in Cardiff and 14 in London. And that's the BBC News at five past eight. Thank you, Jason, and thank you, Tony. Hi. With Richie Anderson. Listen live on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio. Morning. How are you? How's it going? 